and that's Pastor Bill. So I'm the, I'm the one who's blessed to be able to close this conference down. Amen? Has anybody, has anybody gleaned anything from this conference? Yeah. And I tell you, I, don't, I didn't see one pastor or, or, or Mr. the chaplain that was up here earlier. I did not hit on something I needed to hear. You know? And as a pastor, I'm saying that. Mm. You know, because like it was said earlier, you know, even pastors are disciples. Right. Right? If you start out as disciples, we'll always stay a disciple. Because even as a pastor, it's our responsibility to bring as many as we can to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of a job description of a disciple. Amen? Amen. Go out into the highways and byways and bring them in. Okay? So, with that said, one of my job titles here at Church on the Street is Administrator of the Program. So with that title comes things like numbers and collecting numbers and making sure that that the rules and regulations are up to par and that everybody knows what they are and that, that changes on a daily basis. <laughs> Amen. So one of the numbers I wanted to, to try to, to look at today is how many people were touched by the Lord in the last three days. You know? I see all of these hands going up. I'm so happy for that. You know, because that's what this was all about. It has nothing to do with us. We're just the vessels, you know. Our, our, we were only created to bring glory to God, you know. So in the process, you know, the, the process of actually doing that takes footwork, you know. Every pastor hit on so many good topics, I, I just couldn't believe it. You know, so what I wanted to do was a little bit different than what the other pastors are doing. Okay, I want to have what's about equivalent to an overcomers class. Okay, so what we're going to do is I want everybody to break up into into a circle of at least four, no more than ten. So you can move your chairs and stuff so you can get into your circle. I'm going to hand out some papers to you, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so go ahead and get in circles. should be doing right now is picking someone to read the sheet that I'm handing out. All right, and we we'll start discussing it by the exercise at the bottom. Okay, now I'm going to give you about 15, about 10 to 15 minutes to, to talk about this stuff. And then when you're ready, you can come up front and sit up front here when you're ready to share. Yeah. This was pointed out to me that I didn't pray in first, so while you guys are all talking, I'm going to go ahead and pray behind you. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come before you this, this afternoon, Lord. 
And Father, we just want to we want to lift you up, Lord. Father, we're so we're so used to to asking for us or for others, Father, that sometimes we just we never just lift you up and thank you for everything that we get in life. So Father, I just ask, Lord, that you just put a blessing upon this <coughs> upon this hour, Lord. And I lift it up to you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
finish up. You need one, pretty, one person up here out of your group. You can have two if you, if you need somebody to give you some spiritual backing. To come on up and uh, to share what you've learned or what you got out of this uh, conference by talking about something that's either one of those topics that's on the sheet or something else that refers back to this conference. Two minutes left. <laughs> <laughs> but everyone who is fully trained will be like his teacher. And when you're under your teacher, you must obey. And if you obey, you will remain faithful. And you should remain faithful through all the trials, through everything that you may think is your way is maybe better. You should not lean on your own understanding. Just obey at all times. Because when you think you're going your own way and you think it might be working out, You'll find right around the corner, you'll find out why your own understanding really doesn't work out. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I want to share something that uh, uh, Pastor Kevin from, uh, yeah, from Gal uh, said. He said that, uh, he says, oh, you know, you preach, a, you teach a good class or you preach a good sermon and uh, 
try taking that same message and going uh, into the room by yourself when nobody's there and preach it and see how good it feels. Yeah. And you know what that saying is that, you know, it's not us as instructors, it's the Holy Spirit ministering to those in the room. And it keeps you humble to realize that. Amen. 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 Um, thank you, pastors, all y'all, to um, minister the Word of God and the faithfulness that you're providing for all of us. Um, I'm going from John. Um, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be held just as your soul prospered. For I enjoy greatly when you, your brethren came and testified the truth that is in you, just as you walk the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my child walks in truth. Beloved, you do faithfully whatever you do for your brethren and strangers. Um, <clears throat> I have uh, my brothers in our room. They, um, they, they need guidance. And I, I love them all. Um, I'm not here just for myself, but to... Um, prosper with God, and I have my kids at home, they're all saved, living for God, um, I have an oldest boy here in Tempe on his own, living for God, and um, so, I'm not just here for myself, I'm here to develop, to leave brothers and sisters to God too as well, and strangers out there as well, because um, they all need it, and we're, we're going to victory, you know, through God, to bring these souls to Him, Amen. Amen. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I learned a lot from this pastor's conference, so thank you for all the pastors who did preach and say something. Um, I know that you guys taught on the same verse, every single one of you, but I got a different message every single time. There's 18 of you guys on the same message. And so uh, I'm just going to read it one more time, and it says 2 Timothy 2, verse 2. Uh, what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, commit to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Okay, and the reason, like, what I got out of this the most was uh, from Chaplain Shane. Uh, dreams or as aspiration, motivation and strength is inspiring, or inspiration, commitment is dedication, put in work is perspiration, and so you'll reach your end destination. Um, Pastor Ruth also hit on something that uh, discipleship is a process. And everybody in my group agrees. I think everybody here also agrees too. Um, and This process, there, there's a lot of hurt that we're going to find in this process. And um, the hurting is good. I thank God a lot for hurting. Um, Pastor JC also said something like, don't skip your prayer time. Um, what motivates me the most to be a disciple is to understand what God's plan and purpose is for me. Um, it's kind of hard going on through life, you know, just marinating, not knowing what's going on, what you're doing, just kind of going through the motions, just living, breathing. Every day you wake up, not knowing that waking up is a blessing. Because there's some people who don't wake up, you know. And so, um, disciple, disciple, a disciple is someone who agrees with the teacher, to, with the teacher, a follower. Um, and like some, uh, the last pastor said, um, our teacher, our just our teachers were once disciples. Our pastors were once disciples. And I like to follow a good disciple. You know what I mean? And to become a good disciple. Um, there was something else in my note that I lost. Um, Alright, well I lost it. So anyways, um, I'll just keep going. And like, my end destination, I don't, you know what I mean? No one's there yet. No one understands yet because um, we're still going through the motions. We're still putting in work and committing ourselves. And so, committing ourselves to saving souls that are lost, creating disciples. So once I become a better disciple, I'll be able to disciple someone to become a disciple of Christ. Because someone can only learn as far as I'm at. Like my sister said, Luke 6.40, a disciple is not above his teacher, but anyone perfectly t taught will be a, as good as his teacher. And so, you know, I'm going to just end right there. <laughs> hey man, I just want to say uh, thanks to all the pastors that brought us the word concerning discipleship. <clears throat> I agree that discipleship must first start in the church. And then you have to have a willing spirit to do it. And it takes time, but we all have to stay focused, amen? amen. And we can't give up when somebody say, I don't want you to pray for me. Amen. You know, just like you said, when the lady was persistent about 
going to the house, asking the, uh, in the gospel, by asking the man to continue to give herself to all, she was persistent, and he finally opened the door. So we have to stay at them. We can't run when they get show them a uh, mug, you know. <laughs> we have to just stay focused on Christ and know what we're there to do. I have a power verse out of uh, Luke chapter 14, verse 25. Now, now, excuse me. Now, great multitudes went with him, and he turned and said to them, "If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and his mother, wife, children, brothers and sisters, yes, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple." Wow. <clears throat> and we have we have to give up some things. I came all the way from Houston because I didn't want to be in the same city because of so many friends there. Sometimes you have to change people, places, and things. Amen. And so that's why I'm here. And I just want to say thanks for the conference. It's my first one, and I hope to be part of it more. Amen. Hi, I'm going to open with the power and I'm going to finish where he left off. Um, Luke 14, 27 says, and whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Um, what got me the most is that 87% of Phoenix doesn't go to church. Um, in my hometown, it has to be more. And I don't want to be a part of that fishless fisherman, <laughs> you know, place. I want to be able to learn, and I did. I think I learned so much, like my sister said. The same verse, 18 different people. And it, I mean, my ego, hello, look, God's just turning the pages for me. Um, <laughs> I'm just so proud to be here. Um, so proud to be here and to be a part of this discipleship. I didn't know that I was coming into this. And I'm glad that it's not a traditional rehab. I'm glad that I'm here and I'm glad that I'm learning from everyone, from my own mistakes, from, you know, learning to just have discipline. Um, I needed it. I love it. I'm happy. I'm at peace. Um, I have prayer warriors next to me. Um, just blessing after blessing after blessing. Um, every single one of the pastors, the chaplains, I love you guys. Thank you because you guys changed my life. Um, Pastor Kevin, his wife, thank you guys for saving my life. Thank you. Thank you for making fried bread today too. <laughs> All right, how you guys doing out there? My beloved family, I love you guys very much. Ain't God good, amen? Man, I thank God for his grace and his mercy, you know? There's been many times he should have done, you know, just, um, man, I don't even deserve, you know, I don't even deserve what, what he's done for me. It's just amazing, you know? You know, God lately has been putting something on my mind. He's been putting something in my spirit lately, you know, and that's... um. He's called us for greatness. He's called us for greatness. I'm so happy, you know, that um, uh, that I, I got to, I wasn't here for the first day, but I got to be here for the for the two days uh, in this conference. And, um, you know, um, Pastor Eric, or Pastor Edgar, actually, he had spoken, you know, about apathy, you know, about the apathy that is infecting the church, that is spreading like a wildfire, that people are becoming complacent, and people are just going, you know, I, I like the, and then I like what Luke uh, had showed about the, uh, but the the um, the fishermen, the fishermen, you know, like we, we got these gifts, you know, we kind of like it's just a crazy way to think about, you know, church. And I kind of feel and I'm afraid that that's uh, a lot of what the church is, you know, doing nowadays. And I just uh, I pray to God, you know what I mean? Uh, the other day, I that's what I preached on. I don't know why it came. It came out. I didn't I didn't like it. You know, I, well, I liked it, but I kind of didn't. You know what I mean? But I was preaching on apathy. You know, apathy in the church, like, we just, like, we're like, oh, yep, I go to church, yep, 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 I, I serve God, yeah, amen, you know, but uh, Jesus, you know, he spoke John 14, 12, you know, the 13, 14, most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father, and whatever you ask in my name, that I will do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. 
You know, John 15, 16, for you did not chose, choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit shall remain. And whatever you ask the Father in my name, it may be given to you. But I think, like, to be honest, you know, God has called us, called us, God has called us to set this world on fire, man. God has called us to save souls. God has called us to be, you know, to step outside of our boundaries, to step outside of the, the simplistic mentality, you know what I mean, that we've um, in, imprisoned our minds and imprisoned ourselves in. Let us not become conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. When we dive into the Word of God, we find out that we serve a big God that has called us to greatness, that has called us to do big exploits, that has called us to make this world set on fire for Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. So I want to thank you guys so much. I want to thank you for this past, for this pastor's conference. You know, and thank you guys. Thank you. First of all, our group is very grateful that we're actually been able to be in this conference and it was very impactful and so much to say about each of the teachers and everything. What I do want to touch on is what Pastor O'Donnell talked about faithfulness. Yes. I mean, God is faithful when we're not faithful yes. and he gets us to the place where we are faithful. Yes. And one of the things that's helped me to finish when I'm graduating on Sunday is that... mental and physical challenges that I, I have to face every day. I, have to, I take them with me, but God's going to heal me. Yes. So I won't have those anymore. But he had me go through the program with those challenges that I still have. But uh, watching our leaders, Ms. Louine and Pastor Wall and other leaders, Pastor Bill, they have faithfulness. And yes. Pastor Donald touched on that. We need to be faithful in this walk with God. Where are we? Where are we? We don't, we're not faithful. Where are we? We have to actually, and that's the, actually the discipline, denying ourselves. The, the part of the lesson is about well, how do we discipline our character? You know, crucify your flesh daily. Deny yourself daily. Deny yourself good things. So maybe you want that soda. Maybe, maybe you can get the soda, but maybe you shouldn't have it because you, it's just not. Maybe it's not so good thing for you to have. Maybe you need to experience denying yourself something that, that that simple soda or a conversation with a friend. Maybe spend time in the Word instead. So, um, but the faithfulness is, is of God amazes me, and that's how I got through this program. And if we have faithfulness, I believe we have everything because if we're faithful to what He says to do. And, and say or not do and not say, which is obedient and, and faithful, we have everything. We have success in Him all of our life. And we take that with us and we disciple others and have it by our example and by our words about being faithful to God. Because who is He? He's faithfulness. Yeah. And so that's, uh, that's what I wanted to share. Yeah. Okay, and so our group uh, came with a power verse, and it is, I have not been given. I have been given all the authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands that I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Okay, so, um, okay, 40 seconds. Um, it's, it's so good to be in the process because um, it says that we should be, we must be the heart of the church. So um, we all come, come in here sick because it is a hospital. And so what a doctor does is the doctor examines the heart. And then, you know, when you get sick, you start becoming more concerned with what, you know, the paperwork says. You start looking when they tell you, okay, you only have, you only have a month to live. You get so much more concerned with the condition of your heart. And I think that coming here and seeing people and what the conditions are, you become more concerned with the values of your life and who you are and what does it mean to have a purpose with your life. A lot of times we've been called worthless. We have no idea what it means to have self-esteem because we are so low. But we're in the perfect position to be able to examine the conditions of our heart. And so what, what What's happening, what's happening in the process is that we're becoming more lovable and more teachable. Amen. Hi, my name's Frank. My name's Frank Gabbard. So, I've been in the like two months. And this is the first time I've ever done anything like this. I tried AA, I tried all that, sponsors and all that. I found my true sponsor. That's Jesus Christ, and that's yeah. 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 That, is, that is the biggest truth I've ever spoke out of my mouth. Jesus Christ, that's truth. Just those two words is truth. 
you know, and um, me and, and my buddies right here, we, we got together and we talked about a little bit about what it means. Well, first of all, I'd like to say thanks to the worship team. It's very uplifting. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm a little tired right now. I just got done moving furniture all morning, but, um, <laughs> but uh, okay, there, it's a process. First of all, it says, it says how do we... How do we discipline? How do we discipline our character to become more like Christ? What you got to do is you got to listen. You have to obey. Choose to say yes to Jesus and no to self. Okay. And then they say, well, what? When we talked about, well, what's the the what? In what list does this process take right here? You know that these things that we talked about, and we made it into a uh, a list. First and utmost, you got to stay focused on Christ. First and utmost. And number two is you got to be teachable and willing. Heart. You have to have a teachable and willing heart. And number three, it's a process, you know. And then number four, don't conform to the world. And number five, and this is the this is the big one. This is the big one. Believe this. It's obey. Because there's people up here that are trained by the divine to train to change their lives, man. You know? And that's the big one. And um my power verse, I'm not very I'm not very uh strict on the Bible yet. But a power verse that really sticks out to me, I don't know the address, but it's, He who loves correction loves knowledge. But he who hates correction is stupid. to go on faithfulness. You know, we can't take being a disciple in a nonchalant manner. We have to be faithful and disciplined. Faithful even to um, do our chores. You know, faithful and on time. Faithful to be teachable. You know, the faith, faithful prayers and pray in my life, God honored. I always tell the ladies, the Bible says, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. I remember that Thursday night, I invited my son to pray with me. He wouldn't lift his hands when he left, but he bowed down with me. Amen. And that's a faithful prayer of a mother. Amen. Right. And we're all doing it, not just for our children, but for the generation that is to come. Amen. If we are not faithful in our walk, if we are not faithfully disciplined, if we don't faithfully love our brothers, if we're not faithful to obey even the RAs, How do we expect our children and grandchildren to obey our words? You reap what you sow. We were taught faithfulness, and it is a fruit of the Spirit. And I know that if we as elders, we as disciples don't have faithfulness. We'll falter somewhere. And all that faithfulness that we've built up, we're going to have to start from scratch. Yeah. Amen. Okay, the power of verse for this group is um, John 8 31. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. Amen. 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 And the truth will set you free. Amen. Well, folks, I appreciate you all coming up, but we have run out of time. You know, I just wanted to. Don't worry, God will honor you for just coming up and sitting up there. 
know, I know this was a little unorthodox doing this this way, but uh, you know, sometimes we we have to turn off the, the alarm. You know, sometimes uh, we just need to hear each other's hearts. You know, this is it's not about Bill. It's not about Pastor Walt. It's not about Deborah. You know, this is about God. This is about God. You know, and he needs to hear where our hearts are. He already knows, but he likes to hear it out of our mouths. You know, so I really appreciate those who came up to share. And uh, I just love being here, guys, and I love all of you. Thank you.